Now on Radio 3 at 4 o'clock, today's recorded choral evensong, which came from Christchurch Cathedral, Oxford. The canticles are sung to the setting in G by Sir Charles Villas Stanford, and the anthem, with music also by Stanford, is a setting of words from the first chapter of the book of Habakkuk. For lo, I raise up that bitter and hasty nation. The service opens with the setting of the Praises by William Smith. as appointed for the second evening.
lesson is written in the eighth chapter of the book of the prophet Zechariah, beginning at the ninth verse. These are the words of the Lord of hosts. Take courage, you who in these days hear from the prophets who were present when the foundations were laid for the house of the Lord of hosts, their promise that the temple is to be rebuilt. Till that time, there was no hiring either of man or of beast. No one could safely go about his business because of his enemies, and I set all men one against another. But now I am not the same towards the survivors of this people as I was in former days, says the Lord of hosts. For they shall sow in safety, the vine shall yield its fruit, and the soil its produce, the heavens shall give their due. With all these things I will endow the survivors of this people. You, house of Judah and house of Israel, have been the very symbol of a curse to all the nations. And now I will save you, and you shall become the symbol of a blessing. Courage, do not be afraid. For these are the words of the Lord of hosts. Whereas I resolved to ruin you, 
Because your ancestors roused me to anger, says the Lord of hosts, and I did not relent, so in these days I have once more resolved to do good to to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not be afraid. This is what you shall do. Speak the truth to each other. Administer true and sound justice in the city gate. Do not contrive any evil one against another, and do not love perjury, for all this I hate. This is the very word of the Lord. The word of the Lord of hosts came to me. These are the words of the Lord of hosts. The fasts of the fourth month and of the fifth, the seventh and the tenth, shall become festivals of joy and gladness, for the house of Judah, love, truth, and peace. These are the words of the Lord of hosts. Nations and dwellers in great cities shall yet come. People of one city shall come to those of another and say, let us go and entreat the favor of the Lord and resort to the Lord of hosts, and I will come too. So great nations and mighty peoples shall resort to the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and entreat his favor. These are the words of the Lord of hosts. In those days, when ten men from nations of every language pluck up courage, they shall pluck the robe of a Jew and say, We will go with you because we have heard that God is with you. Here ends the first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the third chapter of the Epistle to the Ephesians, beginning at the first verse. With this in mind, I make my prayer. I, Paul, who in the cause of you Gentiles am now the prisoner of Christ Jesus. For surely you have heard how God has assigned the gift of his grace to me for your benefit. It was by a revelation that his secret was made known to me. I have already written a brief account of this, and by reading it you may perceive that I understand the secret of Christ. In former generations, this was not disclosed to the human race, but now it has been revealed by inspiration to his dedicated apostles and prophets that through the gospel, the Gentiles are joint heirs with the Jews, part of the same body, sharers together in the promise made in Christ Jesus. Such is the gospel of which I was made a minister by God's gift, bestowed unmerited on me in the working of his power. To me, who am less than the least of all God's people, he has granted of his grace the privilege of proclaiming to the Gentiles the good news of the unfathomable riches of Christ and of bringing to light how this hidden purpose was to be put into effect. It was hidden for long ages in God, the creator of the universe, in order that now, through the church, the wisdom of God, in all its varied forms, might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the realms of heaven. This is in accord with his age-long purpose, which he achieved in Christ Jesus our Lord, in him we have access to God with freedom, in the confidence born of trust in him. I beg you then not to lose heart over my sufferings for you. Indeed, they are your glory. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the God of the Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Set to obey thy commandments, 
and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness through the merit of Jesus Christ our Savior.
Let us pray. O Lord God of our fathers, who rulest the nations of the earth, most heartily we beseech thee with thy favour to behold our sovereign lady, Queen Elizabeth, that she may always incline to thy will and walk in thy way. Endue with wisdom the ministers of the crown, the high court of parliament, and those who are set in authority over us, that all things may be so ordered and settled by their endeavours, that peace and happiness, truth and justice, religion and piety may be established among us for all generations, through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of men, that thou wouldest be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body or estate, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Thank you.